To draw the radial nerve, across the top of the page label nerve roots and brachial plexus, upper arm, forearm, and hand. Under the brachial plexus label the posterior cord and indicate it is derived from the C5 to C8 nerve roots. Indicate that the axillary nerve, which is supplied by C5 and C6, originates from the posterior cord and innervates the deltoid muscle. Abduct your arm to demonstrate its action. Now continue the line through the upper arm. Unlike the median and ulnar nerves, the radial nerve does have important sensory and motor branches in the upper arm. First show the sensory branches, the posterior cutaneous nerves to the arm and forearm, and the lower lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm. These nerves cover the midline posterior arm and forearm and anterior upper arm. We will map their sensory coverage in the sensory maps of the body chapter. Now show the motor branch to the triceps muscle, which is supplied by C6 to C8. To demonstrate the triceps action, extend your forearm. Now indicate the presence of the spiral groove where the radial nerve opposes the humerus and is susceptible to compression from immobilization, such as in a Saturday night palsy. Note, when the radial nerve is injured in the axilla, the proximal sensory nerves and triceps are affected, but in an injury in the spiral groove, they are unaffected, as their takeoff from the radial nerve is proximal to the spiral groove. Where the upper arm and forearm meet, label the lateral epicondyle group, C5 to C8, which comprises brachioradialis, which is innervated by C5 and C6, brachialis, and extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis. These muscles attach at the distal upper arm and proximal forearm. To demonstrate the action of brachioradialis, Hold your arm at your side, thumb up in mid position, and flex it. Now, to demonstrate the action of the extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis muscles, extend and drive your wrist radially against resistance. Next, show the radial nerve branch, the posterior interosseous nerve. In the proximal segment of the posterior interosseous nerve, indicate the supinator. To demonstrate its action, simply rotate your forearm outward. Then, indicate that the next more distal muscle group the posterior interosseous nerve innervates is the superficial extensor group, which comprises extensor carpi ulnaris and extensor digitorum communis. To demonstrate the action of extensor carpi ulnaris, extend the wrist in an ulnar direction. To demonstrate the action of extensor digitorum communis, extend the third and fourth digits at their metacarpal phalangeal joints. Next, label the posterior interosseous innervation to the deep extensor group, which comprises the radially innervated thumb muscles, abductor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis longus, and extensor pollicis brevis. Demonstrate that abductor pollicis longus abducts the thumb in the plane of the palm. Remember the triad up, in, out. Up is for median, in is for ulnar, and out is for radial. The extensor pollicis brevis tendon is the shorter of the two tendons and attaches to the most proximal joint, the metacarpal phalangeal joint. Extend your thumb at the metacarpal phalangeal joint to demonstrate its action. The extensor pollicis longus tendon is the longer of the two tendons and attaches to the proximal interphalangeal joint. Extend the proximal interphalangeal joint of your thumb against resistance to demonstrate its action. Now draw the superficial sensory radial nerve through the forearm segment and into the hand. To show its sensory coverage, trace your hand with your palm down. Show the superficial sensory radial nerve covers the lateral two-thirds of the dorsum of the hand, the proximal thumb, proximal second and third digits, and proximal lateral one-half of the fourth digit. This completes our drawing of the radial nerve.